the IPCC is one of the worst sources of dangerous misinformation. Uh, what I'm about to recommend is in furtherance of, that, uh, of the aims of that panel. In the past, we scientists act, uh, have acted as referees for journal articles, peer-reviewed, uh, and we have peer-reviewed each other's work. So as just to prevent the proliferation of scientific misinformation. That process recently seems to have broken down. Somehow it needs to be re-energized. During my career as a scientist, I have frequently been asked to referee lots of scientific journal articles. Here I will offer a few pieces of advice. First, very importantly, your work should be based on careful observations of nature. You must try hard and recognize what I will call an elephant in the room, in, 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 uh, hiding in plain sight. Uh, ask very simple questions. I found an elephant in the room that I will be describing in my keynote address in quantum mechanics. I have a second uh, elephant in the room that I have recently discovered regarding climate change. I believe that the climate change is not a crisis. Real truth could be found if and only if you learn to recognize and use good science. It's especially true when real truth is politically incorrect and does not reflect the science, uh, to, uh, reflect political business aims or desires of leaders. Even the scientific community can sometimes become diluted by pseudoscience. Recall, if you want pseudoscience to be true, just simply spin it and it becomes true. Importantly, a referee must know and use mathematically based physics. A good scientist must also know how to derive and solve differential equations. That was the first thing I learned as an undergraduate at Caltech. Follow the teaching of Sir Isaac Newton. He found that the world is governed by differential equations. He had to invent calculus to do it, but he did it. A referee must correctly identify the dominant processes. As a starting point, the best way to do this is with order of magnitude estimates of the various conceivable processes. I, one of my examples I can give later, I won't have time to do it though, regarding climate change, the, thing, the dominant process, I believe, has been misidentified by factors of 200. So if you're off by a factor of 100, 200, uh, your process is way too small to be important. It's the big one, big numbers matter, little numbers can be neglected. Sometimes people will promote new ideas that are off by factors of a million. Uh, they just simply uh, haven't run the numbers themselves. most pathetic part of all this is that they don't know that they need to know how to do that. Their lack of scientific knowledge allows science and pseudoscience to promote what I will refer to as technocons, political opportunistic aims. Technocons are readily unmasked and identified if you simply apply order of magnitude calculations. Very importantly, a referee must apply good calculus-based statistical methods, along with good common sense. I would also like to consider methods used by two of my former associates at University of California, Berkeley, Nobel laureates. Uh, when they were shown data, a group of data points, and told, look, the trend is obvious. Louis Alvarez, the Nobel laureate, would look at it and say, flattest line I ever saw. Charlie Towns would look at it and say, I don't see in the data what you're telling me I'm supposed to see. Beware. If you're doing uh, good science, it may lead you into 
politically incorrect areas. Uh, if you're a good scientist, you will follow them. I have several I won't have time to discuss, but they are, I can confidently say, there is no real climate crisis and that uh, climate change uh, does not cause extreme weather events.